Hello, my name is Toby from Art Master Studio and welcome back to part 3 of how to paint a French Napoleonic Garde Chasseur Chevelle. So in this video we're going to concentrate on the second highlight. Uh, last time we did all of the first highlight uh, on the model. If you have missed it or if you uh, just want to know what colours I used before, there is a list in the description below. Okay, so we're just going to get on with highlighting the horse flesh. For this, I'm going to use some Vallejo Beige Brown. It's a Panzer Aces colour. Give it a good shake. Make sure it's all mixed. Add some water to it. Try and get it some nice silky smooth texture. Alright, so I'm going to continue using my 2 0 Red Sable Kalinsky. So this time we don't want to go highlighting or blocking over the entire second or sorry first highlight we just want to pick out all the areas where the light is going to be catching most and this is really going to draw your eye to those areas and if you do it right then it can give a very nice effective look to the model if you cover too much of the first highlight then um, it will probably require more layers to give a, a, a striking effect from a distance so really what we're doing here is um, it's probably going to look up close um, a bit more rough around the edges and um, perhaps not as subtle as you'd see on uh, competition winning figures for example um, but this is a really effective way of just quickly getting a really nice looking figure that looks great up close and from a distance and you can paint entire units in this way without getting too caught up on oh you know I've got a I've got to blend it, I've got to take my time, I've got to make everything look 100% perfect and realistic because I'm not going for 100% realism here. This is a, you know, it's a piece of art and at the end of the day I'm not entering any competitions with it, I'm just doing something that, you know, I want to be proud of and I, I want, to, want it to look good. Uh, you know, on the tabletop as well as in the cabinet. So, not going so much under the belly as I did in the second highlight, uh, the first highlight. I keep I keep saying the second highlight because it's the second colour that I use, but it's only the really the first highlight. All right, so that's done for that. We will put one more highlight on, just an extreme highlight to really make it pop from a distance. Uh, but that will probably be later on or in the next video. Now for the green, I'm gonna again turn it round to find my previous green from the. Uh, last video uh, which was a mixture of flat green and black green uh, although the first the undercoat was black green with black in so this time I'm likely just going to use flat green on its own I'm going to squeeze some out just to see how much contrast there is if there's too much then I will um, add some of the first highlight colour to it Alright, so it's looking a little bit too contrasty, so I'm just going to scoop a little bit out and I'm going to mix those together. 
until I'm satisfied with the contrast. Um, I think that looks alright. We're going to try it on the model. If it's too contrasty, then again, we'll just add. Uh, sorry for the slight transition there. My camera ran out of space. Um, but we will continue as normal. Um, I'm going to use the green that I've just mixed. Uh, I'm going to test it to see how contrasty it is on the model. If I think it works alright, then I'll just continue to use this colour. I think that looks fine. Perhaps it's could be ever so slightly too too uh, bright. Um, but like I said, I want it to be a little bit striking, so you can look at it from a distance and still pick out the highlights nicely. Now that it's drying actually, I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, that is something you should probably take into account as well, is that um, not always will the paint dry the same colour that you put it on. Sometimes it will dry darker, especially if it's uh, slightly watered down. Alright, so that's pretty good. Now we're going to highlight, highlight the red. Now for this I'm going to use Carmine Red. Uh, this is 030. Um, it's actually just slightly lighter than the other red that I told you about that had the same name as the first highlight. But I quite like Carmine Red. You know, just because it has got that little bit of extra contrast. It's pretty much the same uh, tone as the other reds. So we're really trying to pick out all of the raised bits. A good tip is when you're highlighting a cloth, it's good to go and put the second highlight close to one edge um, of the first highlight. Um, so what that does is it creates a sharp contrast between the shadow and the second highlight because you're putting those two next to each other and then it gradually goes down in the opposite direction towards the shadow um, so you get high, second highlight, first highlight, shadow then you get second highlight, first highlight, shadow like that and that will give sort of a, a nice even gradient and the high contrast between the second highlight and the shadow will really catch your eye and that's really quite effective. I'll show you what, what I really mean when I go and put the third highlight on the horse flesh uh, that will make a bit more sense. Now I'm going to highlight the hooves on the horse with English uniform.
putting a little bit on. Just a little, a little dab will do you. All right, so now that's done, I can move on to highlighting the trousers. Now, I used ivory to mix before on the trouser colour, so I'm going to use ivory for the highlight. Now, this will give more of the off-white look that we're going for on those. Uh, the, much more of a warm white than just a plain white or off-white. Add a teeny bit of water to that, just to thin that out. So it'll be interesting to know how many of you uh, paint just for relaxation or whether you paint um, as a part-time job or if you just paint because you like to paint your models for gaming. Um, that'd be an interesting topic to bring up in the comment section below. So. There's a little um, circular area above the lace here and below the plume. This is going to be the cockade where we'll have a, a white edge and then we'll put a red dot in the middle and then a blue dot in the middle of that. So I'm just going to go back to the red that I used for the second highlight whilst, I, whilst it's still wet and just put that in the middle there and then if I've got any on the white I can just quickly tidy that up there we go and then when that's dry we'll put some blue on top of that so now I'm going to quickly highlight the face again and this time I'm going to use flat flesh this is a Panzer Aces colour Right, so here's an example of me not shaking the colour enough. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it's kind of orangey and watery, and it just spreads out far too easy. So that's not good. That means I haven't shaken this colour enough. So you want to really try and avoid doing that, because if you squeeze too much of that stuff out, it will ruin your paint. And you'll have to buy a new one because it's important to have the right mixture inside the bottle. Alright, so now I've given that a bit more of a shake. It should come out a bit more normal. There we go. So you can see a clear difference there between the watery orangey gunk and the actual mixed paint there so be very careful of how you shake your paints so I'm switching to a slightly smaller brush again as I did for the first highlight on the flesh this time I'm just gonna pick out the nose the end of the nose and the nostril perhaps a little bit on the uh, bridge of the nose the top of the cheek on both sides can't really fit too much of a nostril on this side and then some uh, two dots on the chin give them a nice butt chin there 
Little bit on the ear. And that'll probably do for his face, other than the eyes and the uh, lips. So I'll quickly do the lips now whilst we're on that subject. I'm going to use a foundry paint. This is foundry wine stain red. This is a kind of a nice pinky mauve colour. This is a, actually quite a nice colour for lips. It can be slightly watery, so you know again try and shake it as much as you can I'm not a huge fan of foundry paints sometimes they can be good but I find that the majority of foundry paints that I've used in the past tend to um, not meet the quality that I really need uh, for my job alright so that's good now we'll highlight um, the actual white areas, this time using off-white on its own. Right, I don't think we really need to water this down actually, so we're just going to put this straight on. Try and get those fingers picked out individually there. Same on the other hand. The other hand's tucked away quite a bit there. So take your time trying to reach that. Don't forget these straps underneath here. I forgot those earlier, so I suppose they're quite easy to miss being so tucked away. And the horse markings. It's um the most enjoyable bit about painting a figure I find is the second highlight because not only is it the quickest um, part about painting a figure, it's actually the most rewarding because that's what really brings the figure to life, gives it some real character. Now whilst we've got some white squeezed out we're just going to pop some eyes in. Now the horse eyes I'm just going to do a single dot in the corner because uh, you don't see a lot of white in a horse's eyes really. Uh, making a bit of a mess of this so I'm going to have to touch that up. And then the human eyes, this is the real tricky part. Now a lot of people find eyes very hard. So you've just got to really take your time and then touch it up if you're not happy with how they've come out if I was to say anything about eyes I'd say if you're really concerned about them do them first absolutely do them before you do any highlighting on the face because it's much easier to correct an eye before you start highlighting around it um, then afterwards because you know it's much more easy to mess up your face that you've already painted if you do it afterwards and I'm just going to touch up this eye here using some flat brown
all right I think that's satisfactory that's not too crazy eyes if they're too big then they can look a bit too mental and once you know, like I said earlier the eyes on a face or not, not the eyes the actual face of the model is really where the focal point is so now I'm going to put some black in the horse's eyes to touch this one up and this side as well and then get some brown to touch up the horse flesh around the eyes uh, I'd say you better get used to touching up these little bits that happen because you know hardly ever do you paint an entire figure without having to just uh, correct a small mistake that you've made previously it's quite rare to paint a figure from start to finish without touching up a small mistake you know unless of course you take hours and hours and really take your time about it but you know it's so easy to correct these things I don't think it's really worth spending an entire day painting a whole figure Alright, so I'm going to give the wood a quick extra highlight. I'm going to use mahogany brown for this. Now I'm going to do the lace and the highlight to the orange so I'm just going to use probably light orange on its own for this and this is actually quite a watery paint so I'm going to have to be quite careful about doing the lace because the lace work is quite fine and the paint can run in between each individual piece of lace Yeah, so that's n quite nice contrast there. Um, if we didn't correct that contrast issue with the first highlight, then it probably would have been a little bit too much. So we're starting by highlighting all of these orange areas first. And then we'll move on to the lace second. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but um, this is a foundry figure, War Games foundry. They make a very nice um, chasseur a cheval. As do a front rank. So we've got to do some piping here. And some detail work above the cuffs. some more lace on the outer jacket and 
And don't worry about getting the orange where the buttons will be because we're just going to paint over that. So. One trick actually is if you just want to dry brush it like that then that will pick out the lace for you if you're having trouble seeing it. And try not to let the paint dry on your brush as well, especially when you've only got a little bit on there because it dries much quicker. And if you've got dry paint on the end of your brush it's just going to make, a, make it harder for you. Not to mention possibly ruin your brush. And there's a little bit of lace around the cuffs, the furry cuffs on the outer jacket. very detailed uniform this one. Simple uniforms can be quite beautiful as well um, such as the uh, Dutch infantry uniforms I find those quite nice hardly uh, any piping if any at all This is definitely the most tricky part of the model, apart from the eyes. And it requires the most concentration. Do some piping on the collar. I know it must be difficult for the camera to pick out what I'm doing in certain parts here as the camera is right above the figure and not from where my eyes are. So then they've got the piping around the tongue of the hat. bottom and then there's a bit of piping right down the middle Sword knot. So I think that might be it for the orange. Now to just tidy up a couple of mistakes that I made there. Just going to get some black for this. <clears throat> so as you can see on the horse here, there's a little bit of orange on the horse flesh. Just touch that up. A little bit on the green there. Just tidy up some on the lace. Black up where the buttons will be. Separate some of the lace that where the paint drew into it. I 
Alright, so I'm fairly satisfied with that. Okay, so we're nearing completion now. Um, I think, um, yes, on the barrel sash, it's a red, green, red, green pattern, as I mentioned in the first video. There is actually a bit of lace coming off of the barrel sash that I missed, which should be red. I was thinking it was going to be orange, but I remembered. It was supposed to be red. There we go. Now I'm going to put some gold on the figure. I'm going to use brass, Vallejo brass for this. It's one of my favourite golds to use on any figure, any model. This is just a really nice versatile colour. So we'll do the sword handle. And a little half moon and the metal fixings on the horse, like the buckles and stuff. And do the rings on the musket. And the gun butt. And the trigger. And the buttons on the jacket. down the front of the jacket as well and the chin scales And the sword scabbard. I got a bit too much paint on my brush there. And a couple of buckles on the tiny straps here and then we're going to paint a gold eagle nothing too fancy just a representation And I just noticed, noticed uh, the boots have some lace, so go and do those orange. Now we're going to add a quick highlight to the black. I'm going to use uh, dark grey just as a quick highlight over the top. 
you can add London grey to the black grey. Um, that would probably be create slightly more contrast. Okay, so we're very nearly finished now. I'm going to add a highlight to the sword. I'm going to use a model air colour now. This is again Vallejo. Uh, this is called aluminium. Very, very bright silver. These are normally used for air brushes, so they're very thin paints, but they're also um, fine for what we're doing here. They're not so thin that they're just going to run all over the place. They are pretty much watered down just enough for our purposes. We don't need to add any more water to them. Alright, so hopefully the gold has dried enough now. I'm going to put a quick brown wash on the gold and then give it a quick highlight. I'm going to use Games Workshop Devlin Mud. This is out of print now, but there are equivalents called Agrax Earthshade. Although I'm convinced it's not the same colour. So if you can get hold of Devlin Mud still, I would advise that you definitely, definitely do that. It, you know, it makes quite a big difference the metallics that you're using. Well, uh, gold metallics. If you're using uh, silver metallics, then use a black wash instead. And this will create the shade colour. Yeah, the uh, gold's still a bit wet on the scabbard there. And then for a highlight, um, if I have it to hand, uh, unfortunately I don't have the colour with me right now, but. I would use Vallejo Gold. Oh, here we are. I found it. There we go. Vallejo Gold. Perfect. Now, this is going to really finish off the model and the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below or send us an email at artmasterstudio at hotmail.co.uk. I'll try and answer all your questions as quickly as possible. If you have any suggestions about how to improve the tutorials or on what you would like to see in the next tutorial, uh, leave that in the comment section. So I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a like, a comment, share it with your friends, or if you've got a forum that you regularly visit, feel free to share it on there, um, I'm here to help. So thanks again for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'm just going to give you some quick turnarounds. For an extra quick tip, before you go, I'll keep you one more minute, I'm going to use Vallejo Cork, because I did promise this earlier on in the video, this is Cork Brown, I'm just going to give an extra quick highlight to the horse flesh.
just here and there to really pick it out. So as you can see I'm barely putting any on but it makes quite a bit of difference to the overall look of the model. It really catches the eye in the places that uh, the light would hit most. And you can apply this technique to anything, uh, whether it be flesh, cloth, wood, leather, etc.